Hello again, and welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley. And as a follow-up to our last hour's class, in which we were learning some vocabulary related to nature, natural features, and adjectives that we use to describe nature, in this class, we'll be having a more free-flowing and open discussion and conversation about our experiences with nature. Uh, of course, this will involve a, a lot of uh, practicing description. Uh, okay, so pretty straightforward theme of the class. So come on in and join us. Uh, plenty of room in the class and we'll share our experiences. Hello, Heidi, again. Hello, nice to see you again. Hello, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and Francis, uh, Francisco has joined us. Hi, Francisco, welcome back. Thank you, teacher. I'm here again. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, indeed. Uh, okay. Um, all right, let's start, start off kind of generally, and then we're going to get into some more um, detailed descriptions. Uh, in our last class, I kind of confessed that I'm a bit of a nature boy, a tree hugger. <laughs> uh, okay. Heidi, what is a tree hugger? Do you know what I mean when I describe mm -hmm. myself? You uh. love, you love climbing up that on uh, that tree. <laughs> it's not quite that specific. It's actually a euphemism, a slang term for basically an environmentalist and or somebody who really likes outdoor activities. I'm a little bit more of somebody who loves outdoor activities than an actual environmentalist, but occasionally I've been. Once I heard yeah. about um, American politics, some people are panda huggers. <laughs> panda huggers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's a play on words from tree hugger. Yeah, they're they're use it. Tree hugger was first. There are actually people in the United States who have, like, um, they're, you, you know, they're, in in the United States, the government, federal and state, owns a lot of the forests. I mean, a really you impressive portion of the actual land in the country. So if a company wants to cut down trees for lumber, they have to they have to get government approval and make a contract with the government to to harvest trees on government land. Sometimes when that happens, uh, people actually environmentalists actually climb up into the tree and live in the tree for months, not just for a weekend, but for months and months, so that as a form of protest, so that the logging companies won't cut down the whole forest. So that's where the actual terminology came from, a tree hugger. <laughs> They're literally hugging the tree. Don't cut it down. Yeah, anyway. Uh, okay, so Heidi, uh, my, my question to start off, just generally, do you, do you do you enjoy the outdoors? Are you an outdoor person? Um, are you a tree hugger, a mountain man, a nature boy? Uh, these are all these are kind of terms. Yeah, before I was, <laughs> I was a, a nature lover. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, um, every every summer that uh, my husband and I used to go to the mountain mountain to uh, have a camp, to do camping or to have a camping? To do camping, to do yeah, camping. or go camping, yeah. Mm, I enjoyed cooking outside mm. and uh, set fire in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> well, not set fire, set, okay, set a fire in the woods, that's okay. No. Set a fire. Set fire to the woods would be very bad. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, um, Burning wood, uh, we can we, we could buy in a kiosk in the camp. Uh, yeah. Here. Okay. 
So, all right, all right, all right. So you make a campfire. Make so it. I enjoyed making a campfire. Me too. Sitting around the campfire. Mm. Cooking over a campfire. Singing around the campfire. Kumbaya. Yeah. Kumbaya. Uh, watching the, the burning wood. Was very yeah. enjoyable. I don't know why. <laughs> why people Fascinating. <laughs> right? You're staring into the fire. Yeah. Listening. Listen to the night sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Kind of romantic. I, I also thoroughly enjoy that. Right. So, of course, making a campfire is <laughs> completely different than set fire to something. It means you're deliberately, maliciously, it's very negative. You're maliciously trying to burn something down. If you set fire to the factory, you're trying to burn the factory down. If you set fire to the to the forest or the woods, you're trying to burn it down. Not a good thing. It's called arson, in fact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sitting around the campfire, camping out. Okay, that's cool. I also really enjoy that. Uh, how about you, Francisco? Are you uh, an outdoorsman? Um, yes, I like my, um, I like nature a lot. Uh, I grew up in a small city, and mm -hmm. surrounded by by well, a hilly, a hilly um, countryside. Uh, but unfortunately, well, I then I moved to a, to a bigger city to study, mm -hmm. so I miss I I really miss those days. Okay. Camping. What did you? Uh, what kind of countryside? I missed the word you used. It's a well, it's a it's a hilly one. <laughs> hilly. Okay. Yeah. Not a hilly one. It's it's uncountable, so you can't use one. Oh, okay. So, as a pronoun, it, it's hilly, that's all. It's okay. an adjective. You don't need to say one. You don't need a noun or pronoun. Okay. Um, all right. Can you can you describe what it was like around where you grew up? Okay, hilly, but what else? Is there dense well, forests, yeah. many rivers, waterfalls? Is it arid? What's what's it like? Well, there, there, were, there was a, a river and two lagoons. So we used to, to walk a lot and go into the river or to the lagoons to take a take a shower or a bath. <laughs> okay. All right. So well there were a lot of uh, fruit trees. Great. Okay. What kind of fruit? Uh, well uh, they were uh, apples, um what else? Apples, um, mm, mm, I don't know how to say. Um, well, most of them <laughs> were apples. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, again, we're just when describing the more detail names of things that that you can give or adjectives, adverb adjectives the better your description is, which is kind of what we're focusing on in this class, so go crazy. Um, maybe the fruit trees are fruit that only grows in, in that area, so maybe it doesn't have an English name. Is that the problem? No, they have an, an English name, but, but I don't remember in this one oh, okay. <laughs> the name of the fruits. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, I, I live here in the Philippines, and you can't you can walk around with your eyes closed and your arms stretched. You're gonna run into some kind of fruit tree. It's it's like it's very it's amazing to me coming from the United States because here it's we it's almost weird. Like 80% of the trees have fruit of some sort or another, uh, which is obviously not the same in a temperate climate where you're lucky if. 10% of the trees have some kind of fruit or nut. Um, okay. So, all right, there's a river, some hills. All right. G generally, is this like a tropical area, subtropical? No, it's, it's, a, it's a... Temperate? 
uh, what is it called? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a middle one. I, I don't remember the name too. Okay, temperate, all right? Temperate. Yeah, a temperate climate, we often talk about climate when we talk about nature. A temperate climate is the one that's, yeah, it's not Arctic freezing permafrost. It's not tropical, but in the middle, it has seasons. It's warm in the summer. It's cold in the winter, like that. All right, temperate. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, David has joined us. So Hello. Hi, David. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Cool. I'm, I'm doing well. That's good. Um, we're practicing description today, and our theme is one of my favorite topics, which is nature, natural areas. Uh, okay. Do you do you, do you enjoy outdoor activities? Uh, um, yes, I know. <laughs> Please elaborate. Right. What do you mean? Uh, yes, because depends on the weather. Hmm. If the weather is nice, yes, I would like to. Go, I like to go out. I like to ride my bike. I like to do some jogging. I like to go and you know, to the beach, to the lake, whatever it is. I like to enjoy nature. Mm -hmm. No, because when it's too cold, then I just prefer to do more indoor stuff. But I, I do appreciate the uh, the season, the four seasons, and that's what I'm. Uh, the state where I am now, I will have four seasons. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy the spring, summer, the fall. You know, I think each one of them give you some satisfaction, and also not only physically but also in your mind. You know, is the fourth cycle. You know, the is the being born, being grow up, and then die, and then born again. It's like a cycle of life. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. It's good. You know, it's like a new beginning for you when you see the uh, spring, for example. It's like oh, new something. You know, new beginning in your life yeah. too. Yeah. So that's why I look at it. Kind of romantic a little bit, but that's okay. No, I, I completely, I personally can completely understand. Uh, as I grew up in the United States, where of course it's a temperate climate and we have the seasons, and now that I live in the Philippines, it can be three months where the weather is exactly the same every single day for like 90 <laughs> days. But is it good or, or bad? I'm not. I don't like it. I don't what like it. It's like a like a it's a continuous summer, it's a continuous winter, it's a continuous fall. What is it? Well, in the summer here, it's kind of a strange time of year. It's not normal for the northern hemisphere, but it's basically um, middle of March, April, May to middle of June. It's just there's what happens is the prevailing winds. If, if you know what that with prevailing wind means the wind generally moves in the same direction okay and in most places the prevailing wind goes one way all the time all year round but for example in the summer here the prevailing prevailing wind goes this way west to east for part of the year and east to west goes east when it goes east to west that's rainy season it brings a lot of rain it lasts like six months um, so it's a lot of rain there's a period where it it kind of shifts which is like now where, where the weather's actually very nice right now January December January February generally uh, where it kind of it changes and it goes west to east and it's generally cooler. In the summer here, the winds basically don't go anywhere. The prevailing winds neutralize, so there's no wind at all. Just and there's no clouds. There's there's no jet stream. There's no high weather. So it's just blue sky, hot every day. That's the worst time of year for me, because basically the weather has stalled. It's not moving nothing's moving the air doesn't move you know if you were to light a match the smoke would just not know where to go it would just stay right there <laughs> now what is this humid or is it it's dry what is it? it's dry humid what is it well it's drier than normal of course rainy season obviously it's insanely humid but 
so it's a lot drier. But it's it's I've been to the desert in the United States, for example. It's not like that. It's not Arizona. It's it's in the medium, a little dry, but not not like a, a living in a not, not not like the desert. Dry. It's just hot, relentlessly hot. And it right. doesn't even cool down at night. The sun goes away, but the temperature doesn't change. Wow. It's just so, relentlessly, boringly the same. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Uh, I also enjoy the season change. The Changes, yeah. I, so, okay, one more question before you go to the next person. What do you do through, during that time? You just stay inside and teach him yeah. verbally? <laughs> Worship the air conditioner. I love you, air conditioner. That's basically it. Yeah. In reality. Many people take their vacation. That's when the schools close because obviously it saves money not to air condition the schools. Um, it's the normal time of year when people go on vacation. And here they go on vacation to the mountains. Uh, a lot of people go to the mountains because it's cooler and there's some breeze. Uh, some people go to the beach and others go to the beach, but many, many people. Actually, this is the time where Manila, the biggest city here, it's kind of weird because literally 20, 25% of the population is gone. It's noticeable. You, you notice that. Uh, where did everybody wow. go? Yeah. Because it's nobody wants to stay and work when it's like that. So, yeah. Of course, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, Heidi's disappeared on us. Okay, uh, I'll go back to Francisco. Uh, Francisco, what uh, could you dis recommend and describe a beautiful natural area in your country? Well, um, maybe I could recommend Cancun. It's one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. It has a lot of things, yeah, um, a lot of beaches, a lot of animals, dolphins, well, everything, uh, aquariums. Uh, you can eat and have some some beer in a qu in quiet beaches and resting with your family. Okay, uh, but what if I'm really into nature and going into the middle of the mountains where there are no trails and hiking, climbing cliffs and going to waterfalls and swimming in the jungle in a waterfall, things like that, where should I go? Well, if you want to go to the back country or yeah. to the... Good. Okay, there's a, there's a place here. There are two mountains. Two, two mountains. Well, the two ma mountain range. Uh, it's called where you can find forest. You can find um, some kind of animals like deers, um, like well coyotes or other Mexican species. So well, it's beautiful because th there are a lot of uh, pines, uh, b big pines or um, <coughs> you can you, you can breathe uh, clear air. You can go camping and maybe be around a campfire. Yeah, it's nice. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Y uh, usually a small a range of mountains is something like you know the Rocky Mountains or the Andes or the Himalayas. A chain of mountains is a group of smaller mountains, two, three, four, five, like that. We call them um, chain of mountains. Um, okay, uh, what was the thing you can find? What? Oyares? What's that? Uh, no, Animal. coyotes. Yeah, coyotes. 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 Yeah. coyotes. Okay, coyotes. Got it. Yeah. In the forest, you want? There are a lot of animals. I, I don't want to find coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> No, most of them are afraid of humans. Yeah, so I they know. Run I away can't. immediately. 
Yeah, I've camped out in the desert in New Mexico and Arizona, you know, fairly close to the border, areas where there's coyotes and deer and like that, probably similar kind of wildlife. Yeah, I like hearing them at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right now the city where, uh, where I live is shares the, the border with Texas. So yeah. we have a desert sun too. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, that sounds cool. Uh, um, all right. Have you have you ever done a, a backpacking trip, something like that? Mm, no. Are you going camping? No, nope, but I like to do it. Maybe maybe in the future, I like to go, go backpacking. It will be funny. Yeah. Well, it will be fun. Not. It will be funny. fun. Okay. It might be funny, I you know it's that's possible, but funny of course makes it 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 makes you laugh, or depending on the context, funny means makes you laugh, or it's very strange, odd, weird, bizarre. Uh, so funny has those two different meanings, but fun means enjoyable, which yeah. I think is what you meant. It would be fun. Yeah, it would be fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's something I used to do a lot more when I was young camp for camp and hike for two or three days four days hike a mountain ridge like the tops of mountains just go on the highest part between the mountains maybe you dip down hike to the top of another mountain dip down and, and hike for you know 50 kilometers or something like that over three days it's fun uh, plus my dog loved it my dog loved hiking and camping <laughs> yeah. <laughs> favorite favorite thing to do. Uh, how about you, David? Have you ever gone for a long camping, hiking trip, something of that nature? Um, not for a while. When I was in college, I used to go camping with some friends from college. But uh, yeah, here yes, I went. Uh, yeah, when I was in Minnesota, I uh, I went camping. Mm. Uh, it was nice. I didn't like the mosquitoes though, but it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I also went fishing. I don't like fishing that much, but I went because part of you know, part of enjoying and trying to venture and doing new things, right? Mm -hmm. So it was okay. Fishing was okay. okay. Um, I think what is like about the camping is you know at night when you just have a bonfire and people get together some beers and we start you know talking about things and you know yeah. making jokes and reminiscing about the past or okay. you know and also with uh, you know it's fun it's fun to hang out with people when it's we very relaxed and it's cool it's very cool yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I do like camping the only thing I don't like is the in the early in the morning when you wake up you know feel like the pain in your back, like ah, because you, know, you have to sleep on sleep bags, you know, on on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. That I don't know, like, and the mosquitoes, okay. of course. <laughs> yeah, you just need to get the right equipment. You can get little, well, not really camping. You can get air mattresses, but you can get foam pads that are like eggshell. Right, but it, from really you know, but the, the idea of camping is you know being in touch with nature, and you know yeah, that's yeah. part of it. So you know. Okay. So that's called roughing it. Roughing right. it, yeah. Rough it up. Yeah, right. Okay. If you've got an air mattress and a mobile TV, you're not exactly roughing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I right. you know just the idea, you know, to be in right. camping. I mean, even with you know with the with everything that we have when we go camping, it still is very very modern. You know, like you have radio, TV, you have no internet, you yeah. can even do have things like that. And right. so I think you know. The idea of camping for me is like I still try to be more in, in into the nature, so just yeah. try to avoid technology. I guess I, I, I enjoy I enjoy both. You know, pulling up to with your car to a basic set up camping area with a fire pit, and that's the easy camping. It's not really roughing it, you know, but you're taking it easy. You're just doing that to relax. But then, as I described, hiking a mountain chain. You, there's no there's no sign of human beings you don't see another human being for three days you know that's roughing it 
so you want to you're hiking mountains you don't want to bring a foam pad you're basically sleeping on the ground with the minimum of shelter right so I've done both kinds I like I enjoy both um, David uh, Minnesota if I'm not mistaken is also known as the um, land of a thousand lakes yes that's true we have in fact there's yeah. more than 10,000 10, lakes 10,000 that's a yeah, lot they, that's a lot. But there's more than that so there's a lot yeah there's a lakes everywhere in Minnesota yeah and that's why it's very humid in the summertime mm, it's really right. hot and humid um, but it's I mean it's an amazing place I liked Minnesota a lot the only problem with Minnesota is the winter time it's, it's not because it's too cold it's because it's too long uh. Right, it's also have, really cold. Right, if it's it's very cold, but if you know it's only cold for four months, I can handle that. But it's cold for six, even seven months a year, so it's like a too uh, much. Too right. Much. Yeah. Right. Right. I hear you. Um, one of my maybe my most favorite element of camping and uh, you know roughing it, being in natural areas, especially with lakes. Uh, is at night the sound of a bird that's called the common loon which is in North America and Canada now we had them I lived in the east in Vermont and I often camped in Vermont New Hampshire and Maine upstate New York and that was one of my favorite things I like to fish so often I would camp and fish in tandem and I loved listening to the loons have you ever heard a wild loon at night? Not at night, but yeah, you're right. The loon was some. When I think I don't know if this is the the bird, the bird of state bird or something. But I, I remember the loon. Yeah, it might, I think it is. I think I'm not sure. I think so. But yeah, but I'm not never at night. At night. Uh, well, they, I, they they tend to call. They they call during the day, but they they tend to call in the early evening, uh, mm -hmm. sunset and right after sunset. Right. Yeah. They I don't recall. They have their very spooky call. <laughs> and then they have it sounds like a hysterical laugh. It's really it's if you don't know what it is, it would be quite frightening to hear because it's very loud. It echoes across the water. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a crazy okay. person laughing. You think, oh no, murderers in the dark. Spirits. Oh, the spirits are coming to take you. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really kind of a uh, an eerie sound in the evening. Um, yeah, but I, I I love that. I I actually purposefully I when I lived in Vermont, I actually visited every nesting area. I they're endangered. At least I think there's plenty of them in Minnesota, but I they're endangered in New England. So I made a point of actually going to there's only 12 nesting pairs in Vermont. I went to every single lake or pond where they were, and many in New Hampshire and Maine as well, because I loved canoeing. I had a canoe and a kayak, and I loved canoeing and fishing and camping. Yeah, uh, Francisco, what other uh, are there any uh, outdoor activities like that? I okay, I mentioned camp. We've talked about camping, fishing. Hunting. Can people hunt legally in Mexico? Uh, well, maybe uh, in the forest. There are some times of the year where government gives you some per some permit to yep. hunt. Yep. Uh, but most of the most of the most of the time in the year, uh, this activity is is forbidden. Is banned. Mhm. Mm okay. So they have hunting seasons. Same yeah. in the United, United States. There's there's this very there's very specific parameters. The the whatever you're hunting, a deer has to have so many horns. It has to be male. It has to be between these dates. You can only use such and such ammunition or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, bes and besides, in some states, uh, there are some periods of time to to fish to all fishing. Yeah, same thing. Right, fishing season. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's correct. Absolutely. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, I was curious about that. Also, also, I was curious about: uh, are there any other outdoor activities that 
you like to do, camping, fishing, hunting, mountain climbing, ice climbing, orienteering, uh, sailing, kayaking, canoeing, uh, any of those things that you have done or would like to do? Yes, well, um, I have done some of, the, of them, of those activities. Um, I remember that we went um, backpacking. Yeah, I remember that we went to, to the mm -hmm. to the forest here in my state. So, but it was a short a short walk, not not camping <laughs> or not going for some days, just for some hours. <laughs> because it's, it's very hard to <laughs> to walk on the to walk in, in the mountains or sure um, yeah uh, I, 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 commonly we would say a day hike yeah the hike oh, yeah, yeah. I prefer the hike hike mm -hmm. so yeah most of the times uh, we have um, been well we we like to go fishing too oh, uh, okay. there are some here in the state there are some lagoons or some rivers. Or some dams where mm -hmm. you can go fishing, um, maybe stay a day or two. Most of the time, a day, yeah, mm -hmm. a day. And there you, you can you can take your family and have some beers and maybe have yeah. a campfire. Nice. And spend there. Okay. What are you fishing for? What kind of fish? What kind? Well, here in Mexico, well, here in my state, there are a lot of, yeah, well. Um, blue fish or oh, well, I I don't know the name. You know the English word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know the names of the fish. Let, let me guess. <laughs> Bass fishing. They're kind of a rounder fish. Yeah, with a little mustache. Ah, the, those are those are catfish. Yeah. With the big catfish. Mustache. Yeah. They they live on the bottom. Yeah. So you, you sink your bait or your tackle to the bottom of the river or pond. Catfish yeah, generally catfish, bottom um, feeders. Yeah. There are other called carpas, but I don't know that. Carp. Uh, yep. Carp. Oh, right. Yeah, with, with carp. Yeah, most mostly on the rivers. Yeah, carp are pretty much. I believe they're on every continent except south, the South yeah. Pole. But I believe carp are on, can be f caught on every continent. I think they're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That, that fish is very tasty. It has a lot of spines, but it's tasty. Yeah, they're bony. Lots of spines, you're right. Yeah. When we talk about fish and catching fish, eating fish, they're bo we talk about bony, really bony fish. Bony, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, okay, maybe perch. They're the small ones that have yellow, orange, black, yellow, orange, black, yellow, orange. They're yellow, green stripes. Yellow, green mm. stripes, actually. I know, no, I don't know that that species. Okay, okay, okay. All right, just curious. You're fishing for the same things. Catfish can be very big. Uh, my dad caught a 36 pound, 30, 36 inches long, which is exactly one yard, basically really? a meter. Yeah, and it weighed 36 pounds, I remember. It was huge. Uh, do you have eels? They're like a snake, but in the water? Uh, uh, no, sure. I uh -huh. haven't, well, I haven't seen any one of that. Okay. I once caught one that was six feet long, 180 centimeters. Big. They're, they're spooky. I mean, they're creepy. They can they wrap around your arm like like a boa constrictor or something. You pull them out onto the boat or onto the shore, and they ah! they they try to wrap around you. Yeah, they they are dangerous. They are some dangerous because well they no, they're really not dangerous. They don't they could bite you, but they have just small teeth. They they're really not dangerous. They're just scary because they're very slimy, and their natural instinct is to wrap around you. All uh, right. So they're, just, they're kind of scary. Plus, I, I used to work in a restaurant, and we used to get fresh eels from a local fisherman, and then uh, the chef would smoke them and serve them as appetizers, whatever. You can eat them. And uh, I, at the time, this was a long time ago, when I was just a teenager. I had the job just washing dishes and helping prepare the food. 
I remember we'd get this bag of eels, and I they when the fishermen brought them, they'd have their throats cut and they'd be cleaned out. They'd have their insides ripped out. They'd be cleaned. All right when they came to the restaurant. And I'd take the bag downstairs and put them in the walk-in cooler. Eels. Eels. Big bag how, of eels. How do they taste? Oh, they're, they're good. They're yeah, like they, they take a little, taste a little fishy or musky, but if you smoke them, you put them in a smokehouse to infuse the flavor of the wood smoke, hickory smoke or whatever, then they're really delicious, actually. Oh, but uh, the creepy part was I'd take them out of the walk-in one or two days later after they've been caught, killed, eviscerated, and I'd have to wash them to prepare them to hang them in the smokehouse, and I'd put them in a big, big tub of cold water, and they'd start swimming around. They've been dead for two days or more. Uh -huh. They'd start swimming around and wrapping around my arms, and I'd have two eels on my arms going, ah! You hated that job. It was really creepy when yeah. dead things like attack you. Zombie fish. <laughs> <laughs> it was freaky. Anyway, okay. Well, that was entertaining for me. Anyway, uh, okay. David, let me ask you a question. You have a picture of a big old tree as your avatar here. When is the last time you climbed a tree? Good question. <laughs> wow. Mm, the last time I had to climb a tree. You know, I don't remember. So Been a while. I guess if I don't remember, it's time to do it again. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, no, I don't. I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. When was it? I think. Uh, no, honestly, I don't remember. Where, where you grew up? Is that a normal activity for for children? Boys, I guess, mostly. Yeah, you know, when I think it's a normal activity, uh, normal activity for children, you know, and for yeah, right adolescents too. They you just climb everything you want to, you know. It's fun. I think it's fun when you are a kid. You know, you just want to. I I, I don't know why you find you find this motivation or fascination to go and climb trees, but it's fun, yeah. and even though it's dangerous sometimes, but, but usually it's a lot of fun. Uh, I remember I used to climb trees to steal mangoes from my neighbors. That was fun to you know to climb the trees and get the mangoes yeah. and eat the mangoes right. and it's it's it was fun. You know, it was fun. You know what's strange? I here in the Philippines there's there's so many mango trees. There. Oh man, mangoes are so good. Yeah, if if you're motivated, you can go find mangoes for free, really, and they sell them so cheap because they're so plentiful here. Anyway, interestingly, you do not see children climbing the trees, the mango trees. You see them using a long pole with some kind of a usually homemade wire device to kind of yeah, like a hook. Yeah, you pull it. Yeah, like you a just hook. pull it down. Yeah. That's but it, it's right. because when the, the the mango tree, when they are, I mean, there's still plenty of mangoes. Usually the mangoes are hanging down, so it's kind of more, you know, easy to access the mangoes. But then when the, you know when you finish uh, harvesting the mangoes on the at the bottom, the mangoes at the top, you need to be harvested. So that's when you usually use this hook. It's a huge cane with a hook on the top, and you just pull the yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Same. I remember that. Yeah, exactly. and also depends on the kind of mangoes you have, you know. But uh, usually the mangoes right. are amazing, amazing mangoes. Right. So many. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. The other problem is here is that mango trees are generally speaking infested with these giant red ants that live symbiotically with the mango tree. I guess they they're symbiotic. They live together perfectly fine with the mango tree, but they don't get along with human beings because you climb the mango tree and before you know it, you're getting these really sharp, painful bites. It's no fun because I've experienced it. I uh. the personal experience. It's no fun. You're, you're up in the tree and suddenly you start getting bitten all over. Ah. Okay. Anyway, 
which is why you you rarely see kids climbing trees here in the Philippines because the trees are generally full of ants. Maybe that, that maybe that's the main reason because you know mango yeah. mango tree depends on the mango the type of mango you have but usually they are very solid and you know like a robust and you want to they have these amazing arms that you want to you know <laughs> climb and yeah. you know hang something in there or maybe hang a swing on uh, under underneath so you can swing <laughs> over. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's fun, and that's it's something I don't know about the nature. And you know, I mean, the yeah. idea to have to build a house, a house, a tree house. Tree house. Yeah. Right. Very, I mean, very wh cool. why, why do we want to have a tree house? Is because it's it's cool to have to live on a tree. It's amazing, you know. It is. I don't know. We'll get back to our evolutionary ancestry. I don't know what I it guess. is, but tree houses are cool. There's a television program I think on Discovery Channel, maybe, where they build these really elaborate beautiful tree houses. It's kind of and cool. Really? People actually live there? Like they, they have everything? Yeah, I, I don't know. Some people live there. Some people use it as like a camp or whatever. Right. I, guess. I, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool though. I'm sure. Uh, I, I would have one. Yeah. Now when I was a kid growing up in Vermont, which is kind of in similar climate to Minnesota, being a stupid kid, um, we used to climb the pine tree, spruce trees, all right, climb up the spruce tree to get as high as we could after a big snowfall. Now I'm talking about one, two, three feet of snow, like three feet of snow probably, a lot of snow. So lots of fresh powdery soft snow. We'd climb up the tree and we'd literally uh, just fall off the tree from the top and you'd hit the brown branches covered with snow and you'd kind of bounce, 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 bounce. You'd get hurt, scratched with the little pine branches, but you'd be laughing sounds the whole fun. time. Sounds, sounds like fun. <laughs> you'd be laughing and you'd get flipped around. Sure. And you'd get it. Yeah. How old were you when you were doing this? Eight, uh, nine? Probably nine, ten, eleven. Yes. That's like idea. that. Right. Twelve yeah, maybe. Tell. Yeah, Still so pretty it, light weight, you know. You couldn't right. do it as an adult because you just no, you can't. It's the, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You're gonna have to use to be like a light, maybe like a yeah, fifth grader, maybe fourth grader. Yeah, like that. Like that. Exactly. 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 Okay. Francisco wants to know. Francisco, do you want to know what kind of tree is in the picture that David no. has? Uh, yes, I. I think it was a maybe it was a an special tree. Yeah, David. Do you know what kind of tree that is? No, I do not know. I do not know what kind of tree is that is. But I, the only reason I I like this tree is because it's very very robust and yeah, you know and very uh, full of life and massive and very uh, in a way it's very flamboyant too. You know, here I am. You know, look at me. You know, it's like uh, it's I don't know. I mean, I like the, this kind of tree. Yeah. Like wow, it's like me. Tree. It's like me. <laughs> Quintessential tree, the perfect example. Do you, do you know, gentlemen, since you mentioned it, that my name, Oakley, actually yes. derives from uh, very old French, and it actually derives from a phrase that means lone oak tree in the field, much like your picture, by the way. Oh, that's wow. what my, basically, that's what my name means, oak. Okay. That's right, oak. Okay. Oakland. We have also Oakland, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what my name means. It comes from the days when picks uh, and when there were druids who worshipped trees, different trees, but especially the oak tree was the most revered. So it's from the days before, like pre, pre or around the Roman Empire. It's, it's very old, old, uh, old French word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I'm. I'm a tree, <laughs> a You're big a flamboyant lone tree. <laughs> I, I, can, I can relate to what you're saying very, very, very much. So, yeah. Okay. Back when they worship trees. All right. Um, okay, uh, Francisco. Uh, okay. Uh, have Have you ever taken a trip just to uh, just to go to a natural area? 
uh, if I what is your tell me have you ever taken a vacation trip specifically to go to a natural area a natural a national park or something like that mm, well and uh, we used to go to fishing to go fishing um, to some natural areas uh-huh yeah. We okay. have some forests and okay. some dams or lagoons. Okay. H have you ever tried any kind of unusual uh, outdoor activities in natural, which would necessarily be in natural areas? For example, like bird watching or caving or spelunkering, as it's called, or maybe. Um, Mushrooming, picking wild mushrooms, and yes, uh, that is kind of an activity. Or, um, or uh, any survival outdoor wilderness survival activities. <laughs> Ever done anything like that? Any of these <laughs> weird kind of things? No, maybe in the future when I'm when I when I be a little older. Maybe I, I could try to, to do that. When you're older? <laughs> oh, come on. You're old enough. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, okay. Um, I was a Boy Scout, so we did a whole outdoor survival course. I'm so glad I did that. I learned so much that has, in fact, because I, I do spend time outside, uh, it's actually been very handy. I, I know how to find fresh water. I know now I'm in the Philippines. It's not as useful because I did it in North America, but I learned many different plants that you can eat. It is amazing how much you can eat walking through the forest that you have no idea is perfectly edible by human beings. Yeah. Um, it is really amazing. Uh, it's astonishing. Pine needles you can eat. Dandelion leaves, the most common flower. Pine needles are edible. Um, there's so many things that you can eat that you, people just take for granted. Nobody thinks about, really. Um, you've never done any kind of wilderness survival? Have you ever watched it on TV or com um, you know documentaries? Yes, I watched some. Now. I have watched some TV programs about it. Uh, well, last night, well, last, um, maybe two years, two months ago, I was watching a movie, uh, Backcountry. That's that's the reason that I asked you. Yeah, because, yeah. And it was a couple uh, who got lost in the forest, so mm. I was confused. I I I, I thought that. A country uh, mm -hmm. mean, uh, meant forest. Ah, okay. It can mean, yeah. like we talked about. Have you ever been lost? Uh, yes, for for a for a little short time, maybe. Okay. In the forest, or yeah. Yeah. What did you do? Panic. <laughs> well, I think it's the the first feeling, but maybe you have to control yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but well, it was a short time. So, how did you find your way out? What? Uh, well, obviously, uh, walking, walking, and finding the the way out. Okay. All right. Well, you know, you can go to a high area or to the top of a tree and look around. That is sometimes helpful if you already know, basically, the lay of the land, how the land looks, um, where's up and where's down. Um, also, always just follow a river is a golden rule if you're really lost. <laughs> follow the river down. Yeah. Water goes down. Water goes to bigger rivers. Bigger rivers go to the ocean. All cities and towns are near water. So, yeah. Yeah. When I was young, we, we used to work picking fruits. Mm -hmm. Picking fruits, yeah. Uh, like apples, peaches, pears. Yeah. So it, it was amazing because we you we do were in touch with nature. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever eaten wild mushrooms? Mm, yes. 
Yes. yes. <laughs> what happened? Did you? Did they make you hallucinate? <laughs> no. Maybe, Some of them do, you know. No, maybe they were another another kind of mushroom. Maybe I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. th these uh, mushroom were harmless. Good. Well, edible mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, David. How about you? Have you ever eaten? Eaten any foods taken from the forest? Mushrooms or mm. some greens? No, I'm not really that adventurous berries? in that in that case. I mean, I how about wild berries? berries? I try wild berry once, but you know, like uh, maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> just oh my goodness. just to taste, you know. I'm not. It's because my stomach is very sensitive. Okay. You know, and I don't want to be going to the bathroom when I'm, you know. <laughs> I want to enjoy the, you know, the uh, the experience. I don't want to be suffering, you know, having a stomach ache and going to the bathroom all the time. So that's what I'm very careful when I'm eating something. You know, I want to enjoy a trip. Okay. You know? So no, I'm not. I'm not a. So again, sorry. I was just going to say, as little children, it was very normal for myself and my cousins to go collect berries, wild berries, bring them home. My grandmother would make a pie. Awesome. Yeah. 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 When we, I mean, when you're younger, your stomach can't put up with more, more, <laughs> more stuff that you, you know, when you're getting older, your stomach is like, I stop it, you know? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very careful with my stomach. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, I wish I, I mean, when I go abroad and I, I try new things, uh -huh. Even though I know I'm gonna be, you know, a little sick, I don't care. I try. <laughs> I was in Mexico, for example. We have. Uh, I don't like to eat on the street because, you know, I don't know how the hygiene of the stuff. You know, it's kind of dangerous sometimes. But I was with a Mexican friend, mm -hmm. and he's and we we were coming from. I think we were coming from a from a from a gathering or something. It was late at night, and there was this uh, street vendor, you know, having like a little tacos selling on the streets. Yeah. And my friend said, "Let's go ahead and have some tacos," and I didn't want to say, you know, no, because Mexico, you know, because he's Mexican. I don't want to be feeling like, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to give him the impression that I'm, you know, I'm from America, and you know, you guys don't know how to cook stuff. So I was say, okay, yeah, let's go. I just, I want to get just one. So I get only, I got only one taco. It was delicious, you know, it was delicious, but only a little to one taco. And he got like a five, you know, because they, they were little kind of small tacos. Yeah, and he got like five tacos, the f and I only got one. It was delicious, but I, I, want, I wanted more. But I said, no, 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 just you know, easy with your stomach. So the following yeah. day, he was in the bathroom the whole day. <laughs> oh dear, okay. And I was, I mean, I, I didn't say anything. And go, oh my god, I'm glad I didn't do that because you know, the, it, it was. Uh, I mean, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm I'm lucky. Uh, I in in uh, uh, an idiom. An expression. I have a cast iron stomach. I can eat anything. I never. I, I have gotten food poisoning once or twice or three times in my life, but generally speaking, I don't get heartburn ever. I've n actually never experienced heartburn or upset stomach. Or I'm lucky. Yeah, you're much. lucky indeed. You're lucky indeed. Yeah. You know? If I eat something bad, I don't notice it until the next day when I have food poisoning, and that's you know, really bad. Right, right, right. C coming out both ends, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, no. No fun at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm lucky. I I often experimented when I was a kid with eating, like, um, wild food. Like, literally picking things in the forest. I'd learn about it in school or in a book or whatever, and Oh, I've seen that before. I'd go try it out. Okay. My God, I'm surprised that you're alive. <laughs> what is the expression? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> that's it. That's the expression. That which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's that's it exactly. Maybe that's why now I have a cast iron stomach. You I see? guess so. Yeah, I, you I see, trained. it works. It works. I was training for years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right, um, Francisco. Have you ever? Okay, we're talking about plants. Have you ever eaten eaten any wild animals that were hunted? All right, you have a uh, cast iron stomach. Deer. Yes, teacher. Uh, I have eaten deer, rabbits, uh, rabbits, uh, snakes. 
snakes, yeah. The snakes, what else? Um, well, some birds too, doves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, deer is the, like, cow is beef. Deer is called venison when you eat it. The meat, you know, the actual meat is referred to as venison. You like venison? Venison? I don't know that word. Venison it's deer. is deer. Like ah, oh, right. Like a cow is beef. Ah, oh, right. A pig is pork. A deer is venison. Right, yeah. Yeah. A chicken is chicken. Tasty. Rabbit is rabbit. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, very I, delicious. I, I love venison. And moose. I've had moose before. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Have you tried, <laughs> have you tried bison? Bison? Yes, I have. Um, yep, I've tried or bison. Buffalo or buffalo. Well, I, I like I like to go to the United States and try, and try buffalo or bison. Yeah, they, they raise it commercially for commercial sale and you know, consumption. So it's perfectly yeah. safe. It's not really even, it's not like wild. All the wild bison are protected by law. But they do, they can raise it uh, commercially. Breed it. A friend of mine told me that, that, well, I don't remember that the state of the United States, but you can eat buffalo or buffalo steaks. You can, yeah. You can buy them in the supermarket. All They're right. Obviously a little more expensive, but yeah, it's possible. They are stronger than that cow meat. Yeah, yeah, I would say that they're more strong flavor, um, especially well wild game. Okay, the animals that you hunt for and eat it's called game. Uh, sometimes the adjective we use to describe the meat is gamey, like goat. If you've ever eaten goat, goat's kind of a little gamey. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it tastes wild. It's not bland. It has kind of a, I don't know how to describe it, sharper flavor. I don't know. Bear. I've eaten bear meat. Very gamey, really. Bear? Bear, yeah. I haven't tasted bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and luckily they haven't tasted you. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, uh, we're about out of time, so um, thank you, gentlemen, for the fun and interesting discussion. Sometimes funny. Uh, I really ha, enjoyed ha, it. Right? Hi, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, it's ha, ha, funny, ha, ha. ha.